popular fiction, feminist texts, Dalit literature, Sikh literature, ecocentric texts, folk arts, and theater studies, all converging under the broad spectrum of humanities. We now move on to the final session by Dr. Theo Buckley, a research assistant, Queen's University, Belfast, UK. Dr. Buckley's presentation. Please, please continue. We now move on to the final session by Dr. Theo Buckley, Research Assistant, Queen's University, Belfast, UK. Dr. Buckley's presentation on eco-critical aesthetics in 21st century South Indian Shakespeare cinema speaks of the convergence of the Orient and the Occident, a fitting finale to a webinar on humanities. Let's start the session with a prayer song by Ms. Angie Marine of Second PG English. Lady of Fatima, we come on bended knee to beg your intercession for peace and unity. Dear Mary, won't you show us the right and shining way. We pledge a love and offer you a rosary each day. We promise that Fatima each time that you appear to help us if we pray to you to banish the on for Saturday, we ask your guide and ban for peace and guidance here on earth and protection for our land. A lady of Fatima, we come on back with me to beg your intercession for peace and unity, for peace and unity, for peace and unity. Thank you, Angela. I now invite Professor Dr. Cynthia Catherine Michael, Vice Principal of our college, to deliver the welcome address. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, one and all. We have come to the validity. We have come to the valedictory session of the conference, Reading Humanities in the 21st Century, Aesthetics, Theory and Practice. The two-day international conference hosted by the Postgraduate and Research Department of English is part of the conference series to mark the Platinum Jubilee celebrations of the college. It was in 1951 that the first native bishop of Quailon, 
Right Reverend Jerome M. Fernandez founded this institution. Now, after 70 years, Fatima Mara National College Autonomous holds her head high, scaling the heights of progress. The Department of English has been serving the student community since the inception of the college. The department has a long list of eminent and illustrious alumni. In the changing times, the department has adapted to the latest trends. It moves forward with a meticulous and unwavering dedication to ensure the fulfillment of the vision and mission of the college. The two-day international conference has seen well-known scholars like Dr. Sony Jalarajan from Canada. Today we have Dr. Thea Buckley from the UK, Dr. Parvati Bhushnan from the USA, and eminent professors from our parent university like Dr. Suja Kuruk, Professor, Institute of English, and Dr. Smitha John, Assistant Professor, Government College, Artingir. They have engaged us in deliberations on contemporary theories which benefit the academic community. There were also paper presentations by scholars on various themes related to the core areas of the conference. Let me move on to the pleasant duty of welcoming the dignitaries of this valedictory function. First, I would like to welcome the manager of our college, Trite right Reverend Father Anil Jos, as well as the pro manager, Reverend Dr. Abhilash Gregory. They have always been supportive of all the ventures of our department. Welcome to you, dear fathers. Our respected principal, Professor Jojo PJ, is a brain behind this Platinum Jubilee series. He has been very supportive in all the ventures of our department. Welcome to you, sir. Dr. Thea Buckley of Queen's University, UK, is our keynote speaker. She will be deliberating on bloody seas, moving stones, and speaking trees, eco-critical aesthetics in 21st century South Indian uh, Shakespeare, Shakespeare, Shakespeare cinema. I welcome you, ma'am, on behalf of the PG and Research Department of English, Fatima Mother National College Autonomous. Welcome to you. Dr. Clara B. Reshma, head of the department, has always taken great efforts to bring this has <clears throat> to bring this international conference together. I congratulate you, ma'am, and also welcome you to this valedictory function. We have Mr. Stanislaw says and Dr. Manojas, both organizing secretaries of this international conference. Uh, they have taken great pains for, to conduct uh, this event. Welcome to you both to this meeting. Welcome to Dr. Supriya M, Dean of Arts, and all the paper presenters and participants without which this would not have been a great success. I also welcome the faculty of our department and thank them for their wholehearted support in the organization of this event. I would like to thank Mr. Thompson Thomas for his technical support and welcome to Thompson to this event. Once again, Thank you one and all for joining us. Have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Now let me invite Dr. Kartika SB, Assistant Professor, Department of English FMNC, to introduce to us the resource person of the day. In fact, it was Dr. Kartika who put us through to Dr. Buckley. It was their shared yes. interest in the adaptation of Shakespearean plays into Indian cinema that led to their close association. Incidentally, Dr. Kartika's work, Shakespeare in Malayalam Celluloid, has won her the prestigious Indian Women Writers Award. 
I request Kartika ma'am to take over. Thank you, Roshni. Good evening to all. It's with immense pleasure that I introduce the reputed scholar and the dearest friend, Dr. Tia Buckley, for the valedictory session of today International Conference on Reading Humanities in the 21st Century, Aesthetics, Theory and Praxis. Tia Buckley is the research assistant of, uh, in the School of Social Sciences, Education and Social Work at Skewn University, Belfast, where she recently completed Level Hume Early Career Fellowship. Her Level Hume research project, South Indian Shakespeare's Reimagining Art Forms and Identities, examined Shakespearean's productions across the boundaries of language, caste, media, and place in South India, where she grew up. Tia has co-chaired three international conferences on Shakespeare in India, including public exhibitions on Indian Shakespeare's attended by Felicity Kental and Sir, Mac uh, Sir Yam McCullen. And these conferences also included film screenings in partnership with the British Film Institute, Kuhn's Film Theatre, Shakespeare's Globe Theatre, and Belfast Culture Night, featuring live talks and Q&A by award-winning Indian directors from uh, Vishal Bharadwaj, Sangeeta Dad, and Bonila Chatterjee to Abhya Simha and Kela's own Jairaj Dajashekar and Nayar. In UK, Tia has worked for the British Library in London, cataloging South Indian languages. She has taught undergraduate and postgraduates at the University of Birmingham and Staffordshire and worked in Stratford upon Avon at the Royal Shakespeare Company, Shakespeare's Birthplace Trust, and the Shakespeare Institute, where she also did her PhD on Malayalam versions of Macbeth. Tia has published work in many reputed international publications, which are well referred to by the Global Academia. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for the warm welcome by Dr. Michael and by Dr. Kartika SB. And especially I have to thank Dr. Kartika for her invitation to speak at this conference and for her gift of her book. When I just visited Kerala where I grew up a couple of months ago, she was good enough to come meet me in person and give me her own book. So, this is the way that Shakespeare and English literature join us across the continents, even in this terrible time of COVID. I'm so grateful to be able to be here with you for this and to talk to you about our shared love of the subject. And it's my great honor to address the students and the staff of Fatima Mata National College. I would also like to thank my Leverhulme mentor, Professor Mark Thornton Burnett at Queen's University here in Belfast. And I hope if anybody is in the UK that you will come visit us here. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Let me see if that is going to work here. Please tell me if you're able to see it. SDIS. All right, fantastic. And I have titled this Bloody Seas, Moving Stones and Speaking Trees. Eco-critical aesthetics in 21st century South Indian Shakespeare cinema. This paper takes as its central focus the Malayalam language 2014 film Iobin de Pustagam, or the Book of Job, directed by national award-winning cinematographer Amal Nirad. It sets its plot amid the environmental concerns of Munar tea plantations and sandalwood forests. And it won needed the state award for cinematography. He is already a national award winning cinematographer. And it's my contention that 21st century South Indian films that adapt Shakespeare do so increasingly by using an eco-critical lens. Other recent films such as Dilish Potan's Joji which is Macbeth, a Malayalam adaptation, or Abhaya Simha's Padai, which was a Tulu language adaptation also of Macbeth, increasingly shift the action 
to the countryside where the murderer's ambition becomes the greed to take over a family estate. And this shift in setting allows scriptwriters and directors to include environmental concerns. The term eco-criticism is described by author and critic Lawrence Buell as a commitment to environmentality. He discusses the term environment as including both nature and urban environments. And Charles Bressler expands on this to define the eco-justice movement, which looks at the disadvantaged population in raising an awareness of class, race, and gender through eco-critical reading of text. Films like Amal Needed's present an eco-critical reading that might be called eco-justice. This film raises ethical questions regarding not only the environment, but also caste, race, and politics. I would like to show you the trailer, which opens with a scene of verdant hilly meadows. Let's see if we can get this to play for you. Was it possible to see that video? Uh, no, actually, no, Dia. Okay. So then I won't play you the videos through here, but you can see the photos in the slide, correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. There's the link for the trailer. One moment. And you can go back and look at it in your own time. And you're able to see that there's a lot of shots of hills. There's uh, shots of meadows. There's shots of rivers. It's very evocative of the Kerala landscape. And he's shooting it with an aesthetic that's some sepia tones, just like this movie poster here. So the green and the rust and the laterite soil is all coming in and giving you a, a nostalgic feeling. His film combines the biblical fable of Job with elements of Dostoevsky's novel of the brothers Karamazov and Shakespeare's 1605 drama, King Lear which you would not be able to pick out unless you had read the disc jacket, which attributes certain scenes of this film to King Lear. 
My paper does not include a discussion of Dostoevsky due to time limitations, but I focus on the other two elements. This film centers on a family dispute between father and his three sons over a tea plantation. And here's again, the whole family. Patriarch Job or Eob disinherits his youngest son, Aloshi, upon discovering Aloshi's communist sympathies. Their saga is visualized against forested cliffs and hilly tea plantations of Iruki district. The undulating serene green landscape aesthetic provides an alternately ethereal and earthy background for Nirad's 1940s period film set during the British empire, the days leading up to partition and independence. His film portrays the central couple, Aloshi and the childhood sweetheart, Martha, as an Adam and Eve couple who protect wildlife and champion nature. Martha is both Anglo-Indian and tribal. The film weaves in visualizations of the tribal forests threatened by deforestation. It also links back to the caste struggle where scheduled castes and so-called lower castes, even though caste has been outlawed since independence, struggle to get equal rights. The film's climactic scene of man versus nature draws parallels between nature, family, and nation with the ultimate moral against endless human greed and the violence it breeds against other man and nature. Here, Aloshi's own father, Eob, is the greedy one. He perpetuates the evils of the colonizer, including anti-tribal pogroms and sandalwood smuggling. Nira uses Shakespearean scenes at intervals to highlight issues that range from colonial era exploitation to contemporary local topics, such as land rights, the marginalization of tribal communities and deforestation. Here, the retold fable of three sons and their father is narrated by an elderly communist leader called Comrade Varki, played by T.G. Ravi, who tells the first part of the story in flashback. Varki narrates how Yob long ago evicted baby Martha's tribal mother and moved his own family into the mansion after the death of the British owner Harrison. The two elder sons are Dimitri and Ivan, played by Chamba Bino Jos and Jinu Joseph, but the youngest son, Aloshi, played by rising star Fahad Fasel, plays the film's morally upright hero. Martha and Aloshi scenes are filmed outdoors. This openness in nature contrasts with indoor claustrophobia of the colonial mansion that Eob has taken over after evicting Martha's mother, who is pictured here with a white horse. Let me just go back here. This is a song. I'm not able to put the clip in the chat, but this is a song about nature called Mane. It's about the deer. And it links back to the tribals and their love of nature and their skills in medicine and the creeping urbanization that we are losing as we lose, that we are losing our forests as we lose the knowledge inherent in our tribal peoples. And among these concerns, both ethical and equal critical, Nerd's film highlights this ongoing land dispossession. The same year his film came out, 2014, there were months 
of tribal led protests for the distribution of land promised ever since the 1950s government eliminated the feudal landlord system and reallotted the estate. In 2019, after the film, there was a national plan to evict 1 million tribals from their traditional protected lands and forests. And it was abandoned only after widespread protests. Now, Vida uses his movie, which is about both a biblical fable and a Shakespearean fable, to highlight the causes of the people in his own state, in, in the border states and the border regions that are the people who are the most vulnerable. So he's using eco-critical themes and eco-justice. The initial incident in the film that causes Aloshi to leave his own family is witnessing his brother's abuse and murder of a low caste servant girl. By the time the flashback is finished and Aloshi has returned, naval officer, his childhood friend Martha is grown up and his brothers are trying to pressure the father into selling his land to a sandalwood smuggler. Meanwhile, his brother Ivan is cheating on Dimitri with Dimitri's wife, Rahel, played by Patma Priya. Martha and Aloshi resume their love affair, which is pure and sincere and forms the counterpart to their toxic family corruption. Nirid's film uses the Martha character to highlight what Poonam Trivedi terms an overlooked local inflection of the caste differentiation in Indian versions of Shakespeare. Martha is an illegitimate heir and she is both mixed race and mixed caste. So Aloshi's father tries to discourage their romance. However, it's unclear which of her differences is the most unfavorable to the family. And you can see here, I'm showing you a slide about some of the issues faced by the Adivasis or the tribals where they're still facing persecution. And in these slides, you can see behind them the forests, which is what Nirid's film highlights so effectively. And he's got the best friend of Aloshi, looks exactly like this person here who was lynched because he was accused of a crime that was not actually a crime. So you can see the eco-justice theme is coming back in the film. The other thing that Nirad takes pains to do is to showcase a heroine who is Anglo-Indian. And you can see the white horse is coming back into the frame in this fantasy romantic sequence. Actually, when they were filming this, the horse actually escaped for a day. They had to halt filming while they retrieved the horse. So you can see how fantastical it is to place this symbolic white horse into these scenes. And film critics Priya Matthew and Rajesh James argue that Malayalam cinema has always showcased a peculiar antipathy and disrespect for lower class Anglo-Indians who were supposedly born out of illegitimate relationships between Europeans and women belonging to the coastal areas of Kerala. Critics <laughs> explain that the Anglo Indians of Kerala belong to the Latin Catholic sect, which was considered to be of lower caste ranking. However, you agree or disagree with their interpretation, it's important to remember that the state of Kerala is broadly multi religious. The population is approximately 50% Hindu, 25% Muslim, and 25% Christian. Besides the tribal and Jewish minorities, 
there are lineages <laughs> complicated by years of intermarriage with colonial spike traders. Matthew and James point out that near its film erases the surnames of Anglo-Indian characters. And they explain that the Anglo-Indian community of Kerala is divided by surname which suggests their heritage, whether it's Portuguese or Dutch or English. It is true that Kerala's Christian families like Eob's family in the film can trace their genealogies to converts from the Hindu caste, which also include the scheduled castes or the Dalits, which were long victims of religious prejudice by the Brahmins. While Kerala was the first to have the Universal Temple Entry Proclamation of 1936, before that, anyone who wished to worship from a lower caste was kept outside the threshold, warned that their eyes would explode if they crossed it. People who are indigenous or lower caste are still disadvantaged, bullied, and even murdered today. This film has a deep meaning linking the stripping of land and deforestation to the ongoing erosion of the rights of the disadvantaged. One more thing Nira does in his film is to link the tribal with mother nature. Although the film has three sons where Lear would have three daughters, he links the film of female inheritance. Martha the heroine is disinherited which is unusual in a state with a tradition of matrilineal land rights and a region never fully colonized. Many families, name and land would pass through the eldest female child. Furthermore, in Kerala's 1916 Travancore Christian Succession Act, uh, following this, Syrian Christian women still fought for equal land inheritance rights, only eventually restored. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, Tiag, we can hear you. So sorry, my computer has crashed. So I'm on the telephone. <laughs> okay. Okay, sorry about that. The slideshow will have to go. But um, coming to the final section of the paper here. Another film from Kerala that mingles Past issues is the 1997 film Carliartum or Othello. The hero, 
is the lower dancing. He elopes with the Brahmin village head's daughter. Against the lush Kerala landscape. It is no wonder that national award winning director Jay Raj is also an environment, an environmentalist who founded the Birds Club International. When he was interviewed by S.B. Kartika in her book, chose to talk about the landscapes. He said the landscape of Kerala fundamentally informed the way he chose the shooting. He says that extreme wide shots provide a different aesthetic dimension. To capture the environment and nature, wide shots and long shots are employed. He also says the use of close-ups is elemental in reflecting the emotional turbulence of the characters. And he said the hills of Palakkad and Kollamkorda are terrain that clearly define ascents and descents, vital to portraying the inner turmoil of the protagonist. There are even beautiful scenes captivating the serenity of the arachnid groves. So you can see the landscape of Kerala is becoming essential to the picturizing of the dramatic emotions of the Shakespearean characters. And in the climax of Iobinda Pustagam, Aloshi is hurled off a cliff and he, he is spread eagled. He falls off almost in a cross pose. It's very reminiscent of the sacrifice of the cross. And he falls into a tree and his body is pierced in several places. And the tribals rescue him and restore him to life. And he's able to confront the family toxicity. But unfortunately, the conflict with nature has gone too far. And there's a scene that is almost like the storm scene in Shakespeare's Lear, but instead it's a wild elephant whose habitat has been shrunk and he goes on the rampage and chases everybody and gets shot by Eob. And it's a bit of foreshadowing. Once you start killing the environment, the people start shooting each other. And there's a big reconciliation, very much like the biblical scene in the book of Job. But the only people left standing at the end are like an Adam and Eve couple, are Aloshi and his sweetheart, Martha. Somehow, Nira deftly merges the issues of fatherly and filial sacrifice, loyalty and revolt, Marxism and colonialism, interracial and intercaste union, man versus nature, and man versus the beast within. And he merges these into a symbiosis that reflects Lear's final message of harmony and mutuality. When thou dost ask me blessing, I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. So we'll live and pray and sing and tell old tales. In an era where India still exports its tea and where it is under increasing pressure to protect its indigenous cultures, its generational biblical and and transformations remain resonant. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that interesting and informative session.
to the end of the session. I now invite Mr. Stan One minute. One minute. Hello? Please, first we have to invite questions. Hello? Dear participants, this is your time to ask. If you have any questions, you may kindly ask Dr. Pia. She will be here with us. She will be here with us. Ma'am, can I ask a question, ma'am? Hello. Yes, you may. Yeah, I want to know how conceits which used by Shakespeare. Ma'am. Can you just type your question? Yeah, but she can unmute her. She can unmute her. Wait a second. Concepts of shape. Hello, I have a question on the Hello. She has not unmuted, but you see if you can unmute her. Then at least she'll be able to talk. Hello. Yeah. If you have any question in particular, ask me, and I'll be very happy to answer. Ma'am, hi. Good evening, ma'am. I want to know conceits of Shakespeare, ma'am. Yes. Anything in particular? Uh, I think Macbeth. Is there any uh, conceit used by Shakespeare in Macbeth? Yes, Macbeth is a wonderful, wonderful play, and he uses lots of eco-critical imagery. So, the uh, title he talks about uh, the stones speaking, and he talks about seas of blood. There's a yeah. very good adaptation in the Tulu language on Amazon Prime called Padai. That's P-A-D-D-A-Y-I. And that places Macbeth in the middle of a fishing community with the ocean. And uh, Macbeth also has lots of trees. There's a scene where the witches tell him, if Burnham Wood comes to your castle, then you will die. And he thinks I'm safe because the forest will never move. But the people come and they cut the forest down and they hide themselves behind the tree and start walking. So it looks like the forest is moving. Yes, yes, ma'am. So you can connect a lot of things if you want to. Because this paper was going, not going to have enough time, I didn't want to put my but my yeah, thesis you know. is about Macbeth. And there's a lot of eco-critical imagery you can look at with, a, there's a big storm on the night of the murder. So nature is reacting violently to uh, the killing of Duncan. 
And there's a very interesting passage when the witches appear. And he says, the earth hath bubbles as the water does. Oh my God. Bubbles. Earth hath bubbles. Oh my <laughs> and you God. know what that means. And they also talk about fair is foul and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. So when I put the link, a lot of natural imagery, things that are very no, polluted, almost like the poison is so, uh, you know, yes, link, please. It's a very good question. Mm. Mm. Come on. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for such a valuable information. If you watch Joji, I feel that movie Minkles, Macbeth with Lear. It's about the family division, but it's also very psychological and there's a lot of water imagery. You know, there's, there's some fishing that's going on. So you, you have to sort of think about the symbolism. I, I really like that film. I don't know if anyone's seen Joji, but it, it, takes, it takes a movie about Scotland and the king and shrinks it down to a household, which is very claustrophobic and in the middle of their little estate and plantation. And it feels to me very suitable for the COVID era where suddenly everything happens indoors and everybody's been stuck in the same house with the same people or without anybody for months and months and months and months. Ma'am? Yes. Hello, ma'am. Yes. yes, actually, actually, I'm a PhD scholar, ma'am. Oh, I, oh yeah, ma'am. I have in my research thesis in my research. I have one chapter. The title of the chapter is "Use or Use of Conceits in Literature." Can okay. you suggest me a book or any material through which I can get such information to collect for my thesis? Yes, I would have a look at a book called Radical Tragedy. Radical tra Tragedy, okay. Try to get Radical Tragedy. It is a, it's a book by Jonathan Dallimore that Jonathan. changed people's ideas. Okay, okay. Oh, see if you can find that. Uh, Otherwise, there's a lot of good general literature books, something with a very good introduction, like the Arden, Arden edition to Macbeth. If you go on the British Library site, they have blogs about Macbeth. They can talk about the imagery. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And enjoy it. <laughs> Enjoy it and get something with good footnotes because Shakespeare's English is very esoteric now. You can understand some of it, but others are completely different language. Yes, ma'am. Definitely. Thank you, ma'am, for such a valuable suggestion and valuable information. I'm really thankful to you, ma'am. Thank you, and I will send a copy of the PowerPoint through. I'm sorry that my laptop crashed, but uh, you can see that later. Please share your PPT through WhatsApp group. Yes, I will. Okay. Any more questions, participants? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Tia, ma'am, uh, there is another question from Hema Malini, ma'am. Uh, how far Shakespeare characters with motivating others? A uh, good question. Um, so there's three ways you can find out about a character. It's what they say, what they do, and what other people say about them. So some scenes, somebody's off stage, but somebody else is talking about them. So other scenes, you know, like the witches in Macbeth, 
everything we know about the way they look comes from somebody else. And Macbeth is a good, very good one because sometimes the witches give him some ideas and then his wife supports the ideas and then he does the action. So you have to decide for yourself, who's the motivator? Is it fate? Is it magic? Is it supernatural? Is it Macbeth himself? Is it all the combination of things? Or is it his wife? You know, Shakespeare leaves it very open-ended. So you also have to think about it. It's almost like a mystery. Who, who's the motivator? Whereas Hamlet has no motivation and he spends the whole play trying to achieve motivation. It's a good question. Tell about some other adaptations of Shakespeare's work and movies other than Macbeth. One film that's really good that is not South Indian and it's in Hindi and English is called The Hungry. The Hungry. That is on Amazon Prime. And it is Titus Andronicus. Titus oh. Andronicus is a very violent movie. It's got every crime you can imagine, including capitalism. Oh. And it's a. Uh, they take this tragedy and remake it. It was supposed to be a Roman tragedy. They remake it for the world of the Delhi elite. So it's almost like watching the White Tiger. You know, the White Tiger film? It's the same kind of film set in that very rich world, a lot of corruption and uh, terrible things happen in the movie, but it's also very funny. And Nasiruddin Shah is uh, Titus or Tathagat. It's a really good movie, The Hungry. There's a lot of, so many movies. I really liked Ram Leela. That's Romeo and Juliet, and that's very controversial film. And uh, the leads ended up getting married to each other in real life. There's another Romeo and Juliet called Irda. I think that's fantastic. That's set in Kerala. Hello, Roshni, can we move any more questions or we move on to the word of thanks? Roshni? Yes, ma'am. You could invite Stanley, sir. Good question. Heather is a great film too. What do you think about it? I think it's one of my favorite movies because first of all, Gertrude is a much more active character and she takes charge. I thought the acting and directing was fantastic. Uh, the ending is reinterpreted for the problems of today. And Hamlet's motivation is different. He has to decide, should he become a terrorist or not? Completely different scenario with same dilemmas. And uh, the ghost, no spoilers, but the ghost is really wonderful idea of how the director redoes the ghost. Plus, it's a bonus to get to see this in Kashmir and learn something about what's happening there. You should also watch um, Paradwaj's Makbul and Omkara, both amazing movies. The witches are two policemen in Makbul named Pandit and Purohit. <laughs> and they're the opposite of pure.
So, Roshni? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you could call Stanley sir for the word of thanks. Thank you so much, ma'am. So now we have come to the end of the session. I invite Mr. Stanislaus S, Assistant Professor, Department of English, to propose the word of thanks. Thank you, Roshni. And congrats for the uh, net exam qualification, yeah, qualified your exam you heard today. Congrats. Um, respected principal, Dr. Jojo PJ. Respected Vice Principals, Dr. Cynthia Catherine Michael and Dr. Shelley MR, Beloved Head of the Department, Dr. Clara B. Reshma, Respected Resource Person, Dr. Thea Buckley, Members of the Faculty, Participants, Students and well wishers. We have come to the end of our two-day international conference held as part of the 70th year celebrations of Fatima Mother National College. The last two days witnessed a series of invited lectures, seminar proceedings, Q&A sessions, discussions, and deliberations on a very relevant topic, reading humanities in the 21st century, aesthetics, theory, and praxis. There are many who have contributed to the success of this conference. Firstly, I would like to mention the generous support and guidance received from the management of the college. Reverend Father Anil Jose and Reverend Father Ablesh Kriveri have both been so inspiring, motivating us in all our academic and intellectual endeavors. On behalf of the Department of English, I express my profound sense of gratitude to the management. A much loved principal, Dr. Jojo PJ, has always been in the forefront, channelizing the resources of the teaching fraternity for the benefit of the students. The conference idea was this. He extended such solid support throughout these days. Thank you, sir. We had a panel of very eminent resource persons and paper presenters who enlightened us on various aspects of the conference topic. Dr. Suja Kurup, Dr. Soni Jairaj, Dr. Thea Buckley, Dr. Pavadi Bushman, Dr. Kishore Ram, Ms. Smita John, just to name a few. Thank you all. Today, this evening, we were fortunate to listen to the excellent presentation by Dr. Thea Buckley. In a keynote address, she transcended distance and cultural barriers to speak on eco-critical aesthetics. And it is interesting to listen to you, ma'am, you speak on Kerala and the Kerala cinema. Really delightful listening to your take on Yobinde Pustaka and other works. Thank you, ma'am, for reaching out to us and enlightening us. Let me also place on record my appreciation to Dr. Kartika B.S. for her initiative in ensuring the presence of this wonderful resource person, Dr. Thea Buckley, and also for introducing her for us. Dr. Cynthia Catherine Michael, the vice principal, played an active role in the success of this conference. Thank you, ma'am. We are equally grateful to Dr. Shelley M. R., vice principal, for all the support he offered us. The IQSCA team was very supportive. Special thanks to Dr. Shaiju, IQSCA coordinator, Dr. Prajit, Dr. Sujin, for all the technical assistance provided to us. A very special mention should be made of the tireless efforts put in by the ever dynamic head of the English department, Dr. Clara B. Reshma. It was her leadership, optimism, and organizing skills that made this conference a true success. I remember at a certain stage while organizing this, both the organizing secretaries were quarantined by COVID. And at that moment, Dr. Clara took charge of the proceedings and she led from the front, rallying the support of teachers and the students alike. A word of thanks to you, ma'am. All the teachers of the department have contributed in their own ways. 
ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುಪ್ರಿಯಾ ಡೀನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಶೇರ್ಡ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪಲ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮನೋಜ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿ ರೈಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಟು ದಿ ಪ್ರಿಪರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ನೋಟ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಸೋನಿ ವೆರಿ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಡೈನಮಿಕ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಔಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಯೂಶ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪರ್ ಆಪ್ ಸೋನಿ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಪೇಪರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೋಸಿಂಗ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿಡ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ವಿನೋದ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಚಿಪ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯುಬಲ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ಫುಲ್ಲಿ ಅಕ್ನಾಲೆಜ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮರ್ಸಿ ಜಯ ಮರಿಯಾ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕ ಡಿಫ್ನ ರೋಶ್ನಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಬವ್ ಆಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ದಿ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪಲ್ ರೋಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಪ್ಲೇಡ್ ಬೈ ಟಾಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಯು ವಾಸ್ ಲಿಟ್ರಲಿ ದಿ ಆಲ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಟಾಮ್ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಸಾ ದಿ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟಿ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಎಂದೂಸಿಯಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟಿ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜ್ ದ ತರ್ಡ್ ಇ ಸಿ ಬ್ಯಾಚ್ ದ ಪಿ ಜಿ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಫ್ಲಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ನಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಅಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಎ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಎಡ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಫೈವ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪೇಪರ್ಸ್ ವೆ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವೆ ಪ್ಯಾಕ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೈಫ್ಲಿ this sort of support will definitely motivate us to organize more programs in the future thank you all once again have a pleasant weekend thank you thank you sir i take this opportunity to thank all the dignitaries and the participants for the valuable time they had invested for the success of this program on behalf of the department of english fatma mother national college i thank each and every one of you for your participation and dedication now let's wind up the session with a national anthem thank you Thank <laughs> you.